No, but you know, I, I, I do. I, I love the beginning of the year. It's just a, it's a great time to kind of, you know, maybe reset, you know, realign some priorities, set some new goals for, you know, for what God has for you this year. And it's just a, a great way to kind of start uh, something fresh, start anew. And, and, and I know that, you know, maybe for some of you, 2023 was, was a tough year. Maybe 2023 was a hard year and you're glad it's over. Well, listen, you, you, you withstood the test, you withstood the trials, and you made it. Or maybe for you, 2024 was a, I mean, 2023 was a good year. And, and hey, you want to ride that into 2024. Uh, one of the passages that I love to, to meditate on at this time of the year is, is found in Isaiah. And, and listen to God's word, that God's word that he shared over the people of Israel then, and I believe it's applicable to us here today. Listen to what he said here in verse 18. He said, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not see it? Do you not perceive it? I believe this is a word of faith that God wants us to hold on to and to stand on. You know, some of the, one of the things that I believe we can do here at the beginning of a year is we can let go and we can look ahead. You know, sometimes we got to let go of some things in order to step into the new things that God has for us. You know, one of the things that can keep us from our future is sometimes our past. Right? Sometimes our past can be the thing that, that is that weight or something that is holding us back from what it is that God has for us tomorrow. And so maybe as you step into this new year, maybe there are some disappointments that, that you have to let go of. Maybe there's some unforgiveness that you don't want to carry on into this new year. Or maybe a grudge, maybe some pain, maybe some loss, maybe something that in 2024, you know, really weighed you down. Or maybe there were some things that, that you know were not healthy for you. Well, listen, don't bring them into this new year. Let them be in the past. The Bible says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Why? Because God is up to something new. Can you see it? Can you believe, begin to believe for it? See, the Bible calls us believers for a reason, my friends, because we're the kind of people that believe that something good is about to happen. We're the kind of people that believe that we serve a good God and that God is always up to something good. Even when we go through something hard, even if we find ourselves in the midst of something hard right now, we know that God is good and that means that God is up to something good. How many of you are willing to believe that God is up to something good in your life this year? Well, I'm glad you said that. But what is it going to take, my friends, to, to step into what God has for you this year? What is it going to take to... To, to, to have that relationship with God that God has created you for this year? What is it going to take to become the man or the woman that God created you to be? What is it going to take to step in to everything that God has prepared for you this year? You know, the Bible says that, that even before we step into the new year, God already saw it. In Psalm 30, 139, David said, Lord, you've already seen all my days. You've already seen what lies ahead. You already know the path that lies before me. And so I just, I, you know, just think about what it is that God has for you this year. Think about what plans the Lord has for you this year. And so what is it going to take for you to step into those things? One of the things I think it's going to take is momentum. And that's what I want to talk to you about here today. I'm going to start a brand new series on momentum. I want to talk to you about what that is and and how you can create some momentum in your life that will cause you to, to step into what God has for you, that will cause you to experience sustained change, and that will help you to move forward to the things that the Lord has for you in front of you. Momentum. And so momentum, my friends, is a, is a physics term that, that simply means mass in motion. And so, and so if an object or a person is in motion, then it has momentum. For instance, let, 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 me, show you a, let me show you a couple pictures, and, and I want you to tell me which one of these guys has momentum. Which one of these, these guys right here has momentum? Is it the guy on the couch who just binged 
on how many episodes of I don't know what show he was watching, knocked himself out? Or is it the one that's out for a little job? Which one of them has momentum? The one on the couch? No, it's the one that's moving. He's got momentum. Why, my friends? Because mo- movement, movement creates momentum. No movement, no momentum. Momentum is movement in our lives. And so I want to share just real quickly two truths, two truths about momentum that will help you in your spiritual journey and in any area of your life because you know that you can create momentum in different areas of your life. You know, sometimes you might find yourself stuck. You might find yourself in a rut. You might find yourself in a place where you just can't get yourself motivated or inspired or you just can't get going for some reason in different areas of your life. You can create momentum. You can create a momentum that will help you to experience growth and change in your relationship with God, growth and change with your health, growth and change with your, your financial situation, maybe some some goals that you have for your family or your business or some other goals that the Lord has laid on your heart for this year. And so here's the first truth that I want you to think about when it comes to momentum. How do you create momentum? The first truth is this, get moving. Get moving. Why? Because an object at rest will remain at rest. But an object in motion will create momentum. And so if you want to see change in a certain area of your life, what you have to do is get moving. Stop thinking about it. Stop planning for it and just get moving. Because sometimes we think too much. Sometimes we plan too much. Sometimes we, uh, we, we plan so much that we forgot what it is that we were trying to do. And so the best thing that you can do, my friends, to create momentum is get moving. If you want to get healthier, start moving, start eating better, and start now, not on Monday or not next week. Here's a great time to do it. If you want to see some change in your finances, start doing it now. If you always wanted, if you always wanted to start a business Get moving. You want to get closer to God. You want to grow stronger in your faith and get closer to God. Get moving. Why, my friends? Because movement creates momentum. No movement, no momentum. Let let, Let me show you a couple more pictures, and I want you to tell me which one of these people are creating spiritual momentum that will help them to grow stronger in their relationship with God. I want you to, I want to show you another picture and you tell me which one is having some positive momentum in their spiritual walk with God. Is it the one who's reading the word or is it the one who is scrolling on social media? Which one is creating momentum in their relationship with God? Which one is it? the one spending some time in the Word of God. So think about this. Do you know that that people spend an average of two and a half hours on social media? On average. That's what what people spend on, on, on average on their phones, just scrolling, just scrolling. Do you know what that is? That is 864 hours of year. That is the equivalent of 36 days of your year. Two and a half hours a day equals to over a month of our time, of people's time, scrolling on social media. And I want you to think about that. You know, I I personally think that we're going to look back at this age of social media one day, we're going to look back. If the Lord tarries 10, 15, 20 years, 50 years, we're going to look, I believe we're going to look back at this age of social media. And I believe that we're going to see this era of social media. It was a time where humans fell in love with themselves. 
It was a time when humans lost their God-given identity, and it was a time when they wasted a whole lot of their energy and effort on a little device. My personal thoughts, my personal opinion. When we look back at this era of life, that, that's part of what we are going to see. Now, I'm not saying that social media is all bad. I'm not saying that we cannot utilize it for good. But what I'm saying is that this is something that can happen to us is we can get lost in it. And we can begin to live our lives just based on what's in front of this little device. My friends, life is so much bigger than what you do or what you show or what you post on social media. And how many hearts and how many likes you get, it does not define who you are. God defines who we are. And so we want to spend more time with him so we can find out who we are. And so here's another quick picture. Who, which one of these is, is creating some momentum in their, in their relationship with God? Is it the one that's sleeping in on a Sunday morning? Or is it the one that got up, got moving, and got to church to spend some time with the Lord in worship? What am I saying to you today, my friends? What is momentum? Momentum is movement. No movement, no momentum. But if you get moving, guess what? You're going to create some momentum in your life. And so here you are. If you're stepping into this new year and you're saying, you know what? Man, I, I, I want some new things. You know, I've been hearing about God. I've been wanting to get closer to God. I, I, this is what I want. I want more of God in my life. I've seen other people walk with God. I've seen other people stepping into their purpose, stepping into their destiny, stepping into the plans that God has for their life. And I want that for my life, too. Well, listen, my friends, you can have it. Get moving. Movement creates momentum. Movement creates momentum. And I, I want to say this, that oftentimes the, the hardest step to take is the first step. It's the first step. And that's why I say the best thing you can do is just get moving. Just start. Man, if you've been saying, you know what, I want to read the Bible, and you're like, well, I just don't know where to start. Just start. Just get moving. God's not going to get mad if you start anywhere. You're not going to get mad if you start in Leviticus. You might get mad if you start in Leviticus, but God ain't. <laughs> Just start. Get moving. All right, here, here's the second quick truth in regards to, to, to momentum. You know, how can you create momentum, sustain momentum in your life? And it is to be consistent. Be consistent. See, creating momentum just takes movement and a little bit of effort. That's how you can create some momentum. And this is where a, a lot of times, you know, we, we, we make New Year's resolutions, but by, by the second week of the year, we forgot what those resolutions were. Or we've stopped. Because maybe we, we got going, but, but then we stopped doing the thing we started with. And so how can you create sustained momentum is by being consistent. Being consistent day in and day out. Keep doing what you started to do. And guess what? That begins to create momentum, and that momentum begins to build on itself, and you create even more and more momentum for your life. And I want to say this, that oftentimes, the most resistance that you will feel in any area of your life when you're trying to create some change, you're trying to create some momentum, some movement in your life is going to be, be in the beginning. Whenever you start something, you're going to experience that resistance towards that movement. For instance, how many of y'all, and maybe you already did it this year, you know, you, you decided, you know what, I'm going to get healthier, I'm going to get more active, I'm going to get more physical, I'm just going to get out there and and so you decided to go for a run. You haven't ran since you were in high school. <laughs> and you went out there and you started running and then your legs were so heavy, you were like, what in the world? And when the, within the first three minutes, your legs were burning. And you felt like stopping. You know, there's a reason your legs are burning, my friends. Number one, your body's in shock. All right? <laughs> you haven't done that in who knows how long, right? <laughs> so your body's in shock. Number two, your heart is beginning to pump a little bit faster because you created some movement in a part of your body that hasn't moved in that way, 
And so it's sending more blood, more oxygen to that area of your body. But watch this. And even after you've ran a while, usually the first couple minutes are the hardest. It's where you experience the most resistance. But if you push through those first couple minutes, eventually your body adapts and your body adjusts and you can go longer and farther than you thought that you could. What was it, my friends? Consistency. P don't, don't push, don't pull back when you feel the resistance, but instead push through the resistance and keep going and you will create that momentum in your life. And so if you're trying to get closer to God, that heavy resistance that you're going to often feel is going to be in the beginning. Push through anyway. Push through. Just like that guy, you're going to be tempted to sleep in on Sunday morning. Oh, I had a long week. Oh, it's, I was, it's the only day off that I have. I got to rest. Listen, you give God the first, and he will bless the rest. Anytime that you want to break a bad habit or you want to develop a new and better habit, you will feel that resistance in the early stages of you trying to move in that direction. Don't give in. Push through. Keep going. and Be consistent with it, and you will see that change come to pass. Amen. You know, in, in, there's a leadership principle. It is called the, the rule of five. When you're trying to uh, achieve a goal or a certain goal, you can apply the rule of five. And, and what that is, is let's say that you had this, this huge tree that you were trying to chop down, and the only thing that you had was an axe. That's the only thing that you had to bring this tree down. Well, you could go out there in the morning, and you could start hitting that tree all day, but probably by noon you'd wear out and you'd probably give up. But instead, if you went out every day and you took that axe and you hit the tree five times and then you put the axe down and then you come back the next day and again you hit that tree five more times and then you pull back. And then the next day again, and the next day five more times, and the next day five more times, and the next day five more times. What's going to happen to the tree, my friends? Eventually is going to fall down. That is what it, consistency is. It is the rule of five. The principle is do five small things every day that will move you closer and closer to the goal that you're trying to achieve. Take five small actions that will help you to get moving and keep moving toward that goal. And so I want you to think about it like this. You see, the reality is, is that sometimes people think, and again, social media deceives us in this area because we see people's lives oftentimes. And one that depresses us, we're like, man, look at them. They're on vacation. How come I can't take a vacation like that? <laughs> depresses you, right? Discourages you. Or sometimes you look at their, their life and you're like, man, look at all the success that they're having. How come I can't have that success? Here's the deal, my friends. Success doesn't happen overnight. You know, social media likes to tell us that it does, but it doesn't, my friends. Success happens when you do small efforts consistently. That's how success happens. You take small actions, but you do it consistently. And so, for instance, if you wanted to lose some weight or, or maybe get healthier this year, you want to honor the temple that God has given you, what are, what are five action steps? What are five steps that you can take? What are five things that you can do? You know, some of the easy ones, you can exercise, you can get moving. Again, if you've never ran, if you haven't ran since high school, don't start running. <laughs> Walk. Walk for 30 minutes first. Work your way to run. But you can get moving, you can exercise, you get some movement, you can eat better. You can choose to eat at home instead of eating out. You can park further away when you go to the store or when you go to work so you can get some more steps in as you walk in. You don't have to find the, the closest one to the door where you're headed. You can choose to have a, a lettuce burger instead of with bread. Five choices. I mean, just take 
Pick five things that you can do, that you can apply, that will help you to achieve that goal. Or say, for instance, maybe you want to work on your marriage. Say something. I want to encourage you. What are five things that you can do to maybe improve your marriage? You can begin or start consistently saying something nice to your spouse every day. Maybe you send an I love you text throughout the day just to let your spouse know that you're thinking about it. You incorporate a date night. You take time to talk regularly, to connect with each other's heart. You pray together. You serve one another. What are five action steps that you can take and do those consistently? And what is going to happen is you're going to create some movement. You're going to create some momentum. And that momentum is going to create some positive change in your life. Do you know, can I, can I tell you a goal that God has for all of us? A goal that when God looks at our life today and he sees us and he says, this is a goal that I have for you. So if you don't have any goals and you're stepping into this year, man, I feel bad. I'm the only one that doesn't have any goals. I'm going to give you one right now. You can walk out of here and say, yeah, I got to go. I got to go. This is a goal that God has for you. It's a goal God, uh, that God has for every single one of us. You know what that goal is, my friends? God wants you and I to seek him and his kingdom first. He wants you to seek him and his kingdom first. First. Listen to the way Jesus described this goal that he has for all of us today. Listen to what he says. He says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and he will give you everything you need. And Jesus said this on the heels of saying this. He says, he said, Jesus says, when I look at the world, he says, when I look at people living their daily lives, going eight to five, working, doing this and doing that, he says, I see that they're worried about a lot of things. They're worried about where they, well, you know, what kind of clothes they're going to wear. They're worried about what they're going to eat. They're worried about the, the success they're going to have. They're worried about what others' opinions are about them. He said, you don't have to be that way. As a matter of fact, I don't want you to be that way. The goal that I have for you is you seek me first. You seek my kingdom first, and I will give you everything that you need. That is a goal that God has for us. But, you know, if you think about it, most of the time, we seek everything else. And then if we have some energy, then we'll seek God. Most of the time, we, we, might, we might pursue our goals and forget God. Or we might create some goals and then say, hey, God, can you bless these, please? And God had, had, had no say in those goals whatsoever. Sometimes we pursue our dreams. We have these dreams and and then we just ask God, God, can you please bless these dreams? We don't ask him if, God, is this something that you want for me? Sometimes what we do is we put money first. We put work first. We put everything else. And then if we have a little bit of time, if we have a little better energy, then I'll make some time for God. Then I'll make some time for his kingdom. But no, that's not what God said. The goal that God has for you and for me, he says, is seek God first, his kingdom, his righteousness. He says, and everything else will be given to you. God first. And so real quickly, let me share five things. Speaking about the rule of five, let me share five things. Five things that you and I can do every day that will create spiritual momentum. That will create momentum in our life that will help us in every area of our life. Because do you know that your relationship with God, when you have a vibrant relationship with God, what it will do is it will overflow into every other area of your life. It will overflow into your health. It will overflow into your finances. It will overflow into your marriage, into your relationships. When you have a vibrant, strong relationship with God, it will cause everything else in your life to be blessed. And so let me share five things that you and I can do every day that will give you this momentum in your commitment to God and his kingdom. Here's the first one. Five things that we can do. These are simple things. These are not, these are just tad. These are just little action steps. Again, we're talking about movement. We're talking about momentum. We're talking about consistency. Here's the first one. Every day, thank God. Thank God every day. Every day, whether, whether you thank God when you wake up or you thank him on the way to lunch or you thank him before you go to bed, but just every day, thank God. Thank God for what he's done. Thank him for giving you another day. Thank him for what he's doing today. Thank him for the things he's going to do in your life tomorrow. Thank him for your childhood. Just look around your life and give God thanks. 
Here's the way 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 puts it. He says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So one thing that you and I can do and be consistent with it is thank God. And I want you to be honest with you in your assessment of yourself and be, be honest. Do you thank God every day? You don't have to raise your hand. Do you thank God every day? This is one thing that you can do every day that will help you to develop that momentum in your life. Just thank God. Here's another one. You talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God every day. There are, these are small actions that we can take every day that will help to create positive momentum. Talk to God daily. Now, this could be, and in, in maybe you have a prayer room in your house or at work or or you could talk to God on the way as you're driving to work. You can talk to God on your drive to lunch. You can talk to God on your drive home. You can talk to, uh, talk to God throughout the day. But do it every day. Watch, if you talk to God every day, guess what? You're going to get closer to God. You're going to create some more momentum in your life. Thank God every day. Talk to God every day. Here's the third one. It is think about God's word. Think about God's word. You, you thank God, you talk to God, and you think about his word. Think about, what, think about what you're hearing here on a Sunday. Think about the word that you hear. Think about the word that you read in the morning. Think about what it is, that some of the, the revelation that God has been showing you. One of the keys to keeping our commitment to God, or keeping our commitment to God healthy and strong and vibrant is to think about his word. Not just on Sunday. Not just what we hear today, but thinking about it throughout our life. Listen to the way Psalm chapter 1 puts it. It says, blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That means we think about God's word. Listen, listen this, is what the, this is what it'll do for you. Thinking about God's word will help you to overcome sin and temptation. If there's a particular sin or temptation that, that maybe keeps getting the best of you, one of the ways that you can overcome that sin or temptation is you think about God's word. Think about God's word will help you to have peace and comfort. Maybe if you feel really anxious, restless, concerned about the future, one of the things that can give you peace and bring you comfort is thinking about God's Word. Thinking about God's Word will fill you with hope for the promises of God and for the future that God has for you tomorrow. You know, sometimes in life, we feel hopeless. Sometimes we feel so discouraged by our past that we cannot think or hope for anything good tomorrow. Well, guess what thinking about God's Word does? It fills you with hope for God's promise, and for the future that God has for you. Here's the fourth, I'm talking about five things, five simple things, five small tasks that we can do. Here's a, a fourth one, obey God's word. How about that? Obey God's word. Amen. Joshua chapter 1 verse says this. This is, what, this is what God told the people of Israel, what God told Joshua. He said, listen, he said, study the book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Then, he says, you will prosper and succeed in all you do. Knowing God's word is the first step. The next step is obeying God's word. And so how can you obey God's word more this year in your life? You know, we need to be the people that God has called us to be. But the only way we can be the people that God has called us to be is we need to obey God's word. Do you know your family is counting on you? This city is counting on you. This community is counting on you. This world needs believers who are not just believers by name, but who are believers because they are obeying God's word. You know, when you and I obey God's word, what does the scripture say? It says we will have success and we will prosper in all that we do. Those are the promises of God when we meditate and we obey God's word. The Bible says do not, nearly, do not merely hear the word of God, but do what it says. In other words, don't deceive yourself. Instead, do what the word says. If you want to have what the word says you can have, you have to do what the word says for you to do. 
and then you'll have what the word says you can have. And so, so what is another thing? Obey God's word. Here's the last one. Number five, follow God. The man who follows God always arrives at his destination. Think about that. The one who follows God always arrives at that destination. Everyone. Listen to Jesus' words when he talked to us about following him. Here in Mark chapter 8. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples. I just picture this. He's speaking to a crowd. Some believe, some don't believe. Some are already following, some are not. And listen to what he says. He says, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. It's an action step, my friends. It is like an ax that you're taking to the tree. It's a, way, it's a way to create momentum in your walk with God. And what does he say? Whoever wants to be my disciple, whoever wants to follow me, he says, you must deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me daily. Daily. Listen, my friends, Jesus holds your future in his hands. Have you been created on purpose and for a purpose? Yes. Who can get you there? Jesus. Not social media, not what you see in front of you. This is what I mean by we are losing our, our God-given identity because instead of pursuing what God has for us, we are pursuing what the world is selling to us. But you want to pursue the purposes and the plans that God has for you. And Jesus says, how do you do that? He says, you follow me. You follow me daily. You deny yourself. Whoever wants to be my disciple, whoever wants to follow me, he says, you got to deny yourself daily. Daily. In other words, we got to deny our, our flesh desires. We got to deny the, the pull or the tug of the world. You know, I think about this world that we're living in. What if the enemy has done such a great job in confusing us in the age that we're living in today? What if he's doing such a good job in, 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 in hiding the will of God for our life with all the noise that is around us? So many images that are in front of us that are telling us, well, pursue this, desire that, want this. Oh, look what they have. I want that too. Oh, look at that life. Look at that influencer. I want to be like them. What if God hasn't called you to be like them? What if God doesn't desire for you to have that thing that, that is before your eyes? How can we avoid those pitfalls? Following God. The five steps that I've just talked to you about here today, just five simple tasks that we can do every single day, just small steps. And what do those small steps do? They create momentum. No movement, no momentum. But movement will create that momentum that you want to see in your life. And so I want to encourage every one of us. I want to challenge us here today as we get into this new year. Let us, let us make it our commitment to pursue that goal that Jesus has for our life, to seek him first, his kingdom, his righteousness, and trust him that he will bring everything else that we need. Come on, are y'all with me? Let me pray for us. Father, thank you so much for bringing us, Lord God, into this moment, into this new season of our life, into this new year. Father, we cannot step into what we have, you have for us without your help. And so, Father, I pray that you would give us each the strength, the courage, the faith, the boldness, Lord God, that we need. Help us, Lord God, every day to thank you, to talk with you, to think about your word, to obey your word, Lord, and to follow you with all our heart. Give us, give us all that we need, Lord. We're looking to you. Every trial that we have, Help us keep our eyes upon you. Help us to climb the mountains that we need to climb this year and to step into every good thing that you've prepared for us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, real quickly, my friends, before we close, I don't know where you're at here today. You know, maybe you're in a place where maybe, maybe you're trying to get closer to God. And you said, this is the year that I'm, I'm, I'm going to commit myself to him. I'm going to get closer to the Lord. 
Well, listen, you're in the right place at the right time. Does God have a plan for your life? Absolutely. Is that plan good? Yes, it is. How do we step into it, my friends? We need Jesus. We need him. We cannot do this life without Jesus. We cannot even follow God without Jesus' help. We need him. And so how do you you step into this relationship with Jesus? The Bible says you look to what he did for you on that cross. 2,000 years ago, he shed his blood, he died, he was raised on the third day so that that message, that good news would reach you here right now in the 21st century so that you might place your faith upon him so that he would forgive you, so you would receive forgiveness of your sins and step into that new relationship with God. And so let's take an opportunity to do that here together. Because I know there are some of you here, you have this relationship with God. Maybe God is challenging you to take that commitment up a notch. And you know what it is. Maybe there are others of you here today who maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus. You've never even begun one. Come on, this is the day for you. Right where you are, just close your eyes and let's, let's pray this prayer of faith together. Say this with me. Say, Lord God, I know that through Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins and I receive a new life. Jesus, today I receive you as my Savior and Lord. Help me to seek you first, to put your kingdom first, and thank you for adding everything else unto me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.